Hello again, everyone, and welcome to Coffee Break Q&A. My name is Michael Moret. Coffee Break Q&A is your opportunity to ask your Bible questions. If you have any questions for me, I will give you my email address at the end of this broadcast where you can send them. And please keep your questions Bible-focused, Bible-related, because that's what this ministry and the ministry of Scripture Verse by Verse is all about. We're focused on the Word of God. I've been teaching it verse by verse for over 30 years. It's all archived for you at thebibleversebyverse.com. Three complete series going through the Bible at thebibleversebyverse.com. Well, we have a question today from a woman who writes, Would you please explain vain repetitions in prayer? She goes on to write also, I worship and praise God with the Psalms and some of worship scriptures elsewhere in the Bible. I pray for my family and others. I pray the things God asks us to pray for. I use scripture from Colossians, etc. I want my prayer life and my relationship to Jesus, as you say, to be as tight as a drum. Please help. I used to buy these thick self-help books on how to pray. They never helped. I just became more frustrated. Please advise. Well, I'm glad you're not buying self-help books anymore because we have the written word of God and we have a relationship with Jesus Christ and that's all that we need. And by the way, I think you're doing great with your prayer life. And specifically as to your questions about your question about vain repetitions in prayer, the key thing that Jesus was condemning was the fact that they were vain. Not the repetition part, but the vain part. In other words, they were empty, unthinking, mindless repetition. There's nothing wrong with repeating a prayer. Jesus himself prayed the same prayer three times in the Garden of Gethsemane. It becomes a problem when one prays without any thought thinking that there's some sort of magic in a multitude of words. Um, in Matthew 6, 7, Jesus said, When ye pray, use not vain repetitions, as the heathen do, for they think that they will be heard for their much speaking. Now, I think your idea of praying the Psalms is a good one. I do that as well sometimes. Praying the prayers in the New Testament as you are doing, that's good, very good. I also sometimes read through the New Testament one verse at a time, and I take each verse individually and think about what the verse says, and then pray what comes into my mind back to God, sort of having a dialogue with God. Now, my son prays more than anyone I know. I mean, his life is a life of prayer. I'm telling you, I've never... I've never known anyone to pray as much as him. His life is a life of prayer. He pretty much constantly talks to God about anything and everything. And it's not vain repetition. He just includes God in his life. He once told me, Dad, I figure if I think about something, I might as well tell God about what I thought, turn it, in, turn it into a prayer. Or like he said, when he sees something, he's driving, he sees something, he talks to God about it. Prayer is communication with God. In essence, that's what prayer is. And although the content is important, because God says we have not because we ask not, the very act of praying is also extremely important because it is spending time with God. And that's good for our soul. And I believe all these things involved in prayer, all these different types of praying are all a way that we can obey the command of God to pray without ceasing. So I hope that helps. And if you have a question for me, please send it to scriptureversebyverse at gmail.com. Until next time, so long, everyone.